This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back the wonderful, the talented Linda Yellen. Linda just came out with a sequel to uh, Chantilly Lace, the 1993 indie film that was a big hit on Showtime. And it's called uh, Chantilly Bridge. And I haven't seen this yet. I've only seen the trailer, and it looks really good. I mean, she's brought back almost everybody from the original. Jo Beth Williams, Helen Slater, Dahlia Shire, Ali Sheedy. I didn't see Martha Plimpton in there. Uh, Jill Eikenberry. Um, I did see Patricia Richardson has been added to the cast. I wonder why Martha's not in there. But, um, yeah, she's just coming out with the sequel. It's available on some streaming channel. I gotta find out where and stuff. It's been out since March, so this isn't gonna go against the, uh, the SAG after rules during the strike. It's been out for a while, and I'm going to, um, find out more information about the film. Also, too, um, back in 2019, she did an indie film, which we, we talked a little bit about, um, both last time and the time before called Fluidity, and she sent me a screener of it after we talked last time, and oh my god, I felt like I was watching a documentary about my sex life when I was in my 20s. All these freaks in this movie just having freaky sex in public places. I mean, I just loved this movie. I enjoyed this movie until the link expired. I need to actually, you know get a copy of it if it's available anywhere and oh my god it was just amazing and so it's always a great conversation with Linda I just always enjoy talking to her and it's going to be another great conversation also happy birthday Nana today she would have been how old was she would have been she would have been 103 today. She died at 81 back in 2002, and I miss her and love her every day. Rest in peace, Nana. Happy birthday, and please make us strong, especially me in this difficult time. So yeah, here is my new interview with Linda Yellen. Hey, Linda, welcome back. Thank you so much, Tommy, for thinking about me and Chantilly. How are you, first off? Oh, my God. I just moved to Modesto, California. I just turned 40, and I have type 2 diabetes, but I'm kicking its ass, so I cannot complain. <laughs> oh, good. I love that you've moved to California, and that's so nice. How's, is it, I mean, we're having terrible weather here. How, how is it by you? Well, I've been in California my whole life, but um, the fact that uh, we moved over here, uh, it's like um, Bay Area weather that I grew up in. You know, it can be hot, but it can also be a little windy or cold, you know, because up in Redding, it was just, it was badly hot during the summertime. And it can, it, it can be badly hot over here too, but not as bad. Good to hear, and on your health issues, good for you, licking your, you're beating it. That's yeah. definitely beatable. Yep, of losing weight, and it's 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 going good, you know. That's exciting. So, Chantilly Bridge uh, came out on March 24th. Why did it take 30 years to make a sequel? <laughs> well, um, it was certainly in my thoughts for the last 15, um, but... When the original was made, and we just so loved our partnership with Showtime, mm -hmm. they were great. They did everything wonderful, and we traveled the world with the picture um, uh, at Showtime's uh, expense and you know promotion. But they had a 25-year deal, right? And it wasn't just actually 25; it was 25 years after the last, after the first showing. So it actually came out more like 26 and a half years. So that, that's why. And um, the administrations had changed many times, and it wasn't like uh, anyone, you know, 
there wanted to do the sequel of the new people. Yeah. So, uh, so that was we had to wait it out. So Showtime just wasn't interested. Well, it wasn't that Showtime wasn't interested, but it was like really trying to find. There were so many people changing hands, and things were happening. It was we could never kind of lock into a way to do it with them. I see. I see. I'm cur- I'm curious to know because I've you know I've only seen the trailer and I'm just so curious why didn't Martha Plimpton return? Well, she was uh, occupied. I mean, we wound up filming as it was in three separate sections during COVID, mm-hmm. and uh, the the uh, the plot as we originally had it, we had a, a, a Ali Sheedy having gone through romantic. Uh, a, Changes, and so she had. Uh, we had planned scenes with a, a new partner. We had a very wonderful, exciting actress that was going to play the new partner. Anyway, um, we couldn't film it because of COVID. So that that's uh, one of the reasons that we did it that way. That's so sad because she's so brilliant and she comes from brilliant acting genes. And she's fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, she had great moments in the original. You know, I love the part. You know, when she's she when uh, towards the beginning during the conversation, she's she's rubbing Joe Beth's feet during the conversation. <laughs> yeah. How how did you come to cast Patricia Richardson? Well, she had often been mistaken. I've always loved her. She's a great actress and comedian, and um, which is is wonderful. She knows how to play both. So wonderful modulation and she had often <laughs> been taken for for Joe Beth early on. So it just seemed perfect. Yeah. Now, now, I, one thing I, I read is that uh, you do this really clever thing of incorporating scenes from the first movie into new scenes of this movie. Is that uh, pretty accurate? That is true, and that's why we had to wait so many years to get the rights back. And it was essential to my vision to see people really age um, on screen um, without, you know, any tricks or makeup or younger people playing them. And it's immensely powerful. It just audiences gasp when they see it. They're so excited and it just, you know, but led to so much conversation. I mean, uh, I cannot think of a, a, another film uh, that, that's done that but, uh, for so many characters over a period of uh, all these years. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that that was just your vision from the very beginning that you were going to do something yeah. like that. That's the only way I would have done it um, if, if we could incorporate it, because you know time bends in our minds, and to have moments when someone is thinking in the present, and then they, you know how you know I'm sure you're, you're the, even even at the ripe young age of forty. You look back, you look at someone, you can see them when they were 20, or, mm-hmm. you know, thinking about that. So, so this is very, very powerful statement about life, I think. Do, do you think you, had been, you would have been able to do that with the old technology? Oh, what do you mean? With the, you mean if, oh, you mean if, what, with today? Or, or, or yeah, it'd be no, 20 years ago. Logically. I mean, it's not it's not a technological thing. I mean, really, because uh, it, it the fact that the old film existed and that the group was regrouped in the way they were is is what made it work. I mean, there's I did very much enjoy Indiana Jones and seeing Harrison mm-hmm. looking so young. You know, <laughs> um, yeah. that was pretty amazing, and a, a little bit out of our budget range. Um, but um, but also it, it it wouldn't. It's not only about capturing the way people look younger, mm-hmm. dress younger, but just their their attitudes, the way they tell their faces, the way their body language. That changes with age too, and some people and some people stays very much the same. So you can see all that when you see the movie. Absolutely. When you got everyone together in the same room for the first time in many, many years, I mean, did that old magic just come back instantly? 
instantly, instantly, with tears in our eyes, it was as if we were never separated. Oh. It's really extraordinary. Did, did anybody have... We all lived together and, uh, 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 you know, ate together, worked together. Um, uh, so, so it was like sometimes the film... Filming was done for the day, but you could have just continued. Sometimes the actresses all lived in the same house, and fabulous big house on the water. And um, they, I'd, I'd walk in on them, you know, because I always had more work to do preparing for the next day or something. And I, I wish that I had like a little camera I could have attached to my head just to <laughs> continue the filming. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody have any notes beforehand uh, making the movie? Um, yeah, well, a discussion, kind of like what I did with the first, uh, a lot of intimate discussions with each of them uh, prior to filming um, uh, about the goals, objectives, and then, of course, as as I was directing it, then that's, that's a big part of it. Uh, but um, basically... Um, I'm so excited to have you see it because I think it's one of the most naturalistic films where, you know my film Fluidity, which I did right yes. before, and, and I really, you know, wanted to experiment with every kind of special effect that we could afford and, 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 and technique and, and whatnot, and to be very young and, and, and very much have you feel the directorial presence in that film because it was appropriate to the film. And uh, move in a certain way that was very fast and, and uh, colorful. This film, I wanted the audience to feel they were just a fly on the wall, that there wasn't a director there. You were somehow just peering into these people, as, these women, as they got together. Mm -hmm. and you got um, a, a Judy Collins song on the soundtrack? More than one. It's really quite wonderful. Judy saw a rough cut of the film and just so fell in love with the movie that she agreed to do some of the major work in helping you know, the scoring of it with, with Pat Seymour. I mean, they're just some musical inventions that I think are outstanding. And her voice is, it just takes you right back 30 years, too. Yeah. You're a big fan of hers? I always was, but I didn't know her, and I'm so glad that this film brought us together and, and uh, you know, have a friendship. Um, yeah, we used to listen to her when I was in college. Yeah, uh, she was big back then. Was was this shot in 2020 or 21? It was shot in 2020. Okay. So, uh, yeah, because you and I, we talked, I think, around summer of 2020 or just about to. Yeah, so you were you were probably in pre-production at the time. Yes. Well, a little late. No, a little later, probably, to the fall. Yeah. Where is where's it available again? Where is it available? Yeah. It's what? on lots of platforms. Of Clara, where, what would it be? Amazon, iTunes. Google Play, if you just type it in, you'll see, you know, like eight or ten of the usual suspects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so after last time we, we talked, you know, you sent me that screener for Fluidity, and I watched it many times before the link expired, and I felt... <laughs> I felt like I was watching a documentary on my sex life in my 20s and my early 30s. You know, <laughs> there's so many similarities. Uh, I can imagine everyone had fun making this movie. Oh, yes. But it was, you know, it's also very, however young and free you are, it's always stressful to take clothes off in front of the camera. Yeah, did you guys have um, intimacy coordinators? No, we, we, this is before that became the, the edict, just, just months before. Um, but um, everyone who did the movie had to be well aware of what I would uh, require beforehand. Mm -hmm. and, and it either had to be excited, that was just one of the requirements, so that there was no confusion, that no one could say, what? I didn't know I had to do this. You know how that is. Um, but it was an essential part of the message of the story, uh, I felt, 
didn't you, when you when you see the ending? And yeah, I just liked how there there was absolutely no shame of any of these characters, and you guys just went in and did it. I mean, I was just I was just loving it. I, I is it, is it available on Blu-ray? Um, right now, I think um, we are in the process of after completing a really wonderfully like two-year run nonstop on on Showtime. We are in the process of selling it, so I will let you know. I'll make a note. I'm writing it down when we announce the, the new buyer. Uh, but I, I don't think it's, uh, it shouldn't be a bad, if, if, unless it was ripped off somehow, which we hope it wasn't. It's not, it's not available at this moment. Yeah, please, because I, I really, really like it. Um, is there any genre of movie you haven't made yet that you'd like to make? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm working now on a, a, a teen drama um, uh, about uh, based on a best-selling uh, YA novel um, called One Stupid Thing. And for me, it's going to kind of be my breakfast club, which is what the book was compared to, slash my Stand By Me. Right. Um, I have done about the kind of... Uh, I, I, and throw in a little summer of 42. Mm -hmm. We have one of the most breathtaking visual locations to shoot in. Um, so that's what I hope that the strike will get settled. I mean, they're already giving waivers, and uh, that is something I hope to be doing in the fall. Nice. Yeah, I saw on your IMDb that that was uh, what you were working on. Would, would, you, would you ever make a Western? I'd love to. I, 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 I grew up on Westerns. Um, my mom took me to the love stories, and my dad took me to the westerns and the <laughs> war movies. You know, yeah. I, I didn't connect that much to the war, war movies, but I certainly would love to do uh, a western, uh, a kind of an iconic American western. You know, um, I, I love things that like Gary Cooper and John Wayne were in, and uh, um, really, it, I'd want one that had a real star toward the force performance and just wasn't about the violence. Yeah, what were your favorite westerns growing up? Mm. Um, so, oh, by the way, one that is not really a western, but it's a, this is a western, it just popped into my head because I also remember it was Ballad of Cat Blue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lee, um, Lee, Lee Marvin won the Academy Award for that. And, and the horse almost won. As people, yeah. he get no credit as the horse. Yeah. Um, remember, uh, I I love the Searchers. Oh, my favorite. Is that your favorite? That and um, uh, the Gunfighter with Gregory Peck, and oh, that was wonderful. What else do you like? Um, let's see. I mean, I, I, I love a, a lot of the the John Wayne and John Ford ones, you know. Uh, even though they're they're considered horribly racist by today's standards, uh, I like the, uh, all the ones that Jim, Jimmy Stewart did with Anthony Mann. Those are good mm -hmm. too. Um, yeah, a lot, there's a lot of good ones. Don't forsake me, oh my darling. On this our wedding, what, what is that from? You know the song. Oh, do, do not forsake me, oh my darling. On this our wedding, wedding day. I think that was the. Gary Cooper, or maybe Grace Kelly was in it too. High or noon. Something. High noon. High noon. I love. Good for you. Yeah, that's the name I. I absolutely adore High noon. Yeah, actually, Gregory Peck turned down High Noon because he thought it was too similar to the Gunfighter. Huh. Well, he may. I think that's true, but. It hasn't stopped John Wayne from doing things that's very similar. Well, John Wayne, he actually he turned down High Noon because he thought it was it was it was an un-American Western or something like that. Oh my God, isn't that funny? That's so great that you know why people turn down things and who did. Oh yeah, and I interv uh, Stanley Kramer produced the movie, and I interviewed his daughter earlier this year. Lovely, lovely. What a talented producer. Yes. And did he direct also, or did he only produce? He, he directed uh, Inherit the Wind, On the Beach, uh, The Defiant Ones, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Lots of good movies. 
Yeah, guess who's coming to dinner? He he did a lot of great movies. He he. Pre- director, I don't. I I wish you would focus the uh, podcast on. And, you know, I'm just learning about them. I don't know why I didn't know before. Carol Rice. I mean, Carol Rice. Yeah, you know, Carol Rice. Yeah, she was the one who directed. I I should know that name. I can't place Carol Rice. Yeah, look him up. And then there's the famous Hungarian uh, guy. Uh, director um, that did so many in the 30s and 40s, and I'm blocking on his name because it's not a memorable name, but he did uh, some of the most, you know, incredible movies. Um, I'll, I'll have to call you back with that name. <laughs> but um, but it, it, it just those. I thank goodness for TCM. And let, let's hope that, did you watch that? Of course. I mean, that's like the only channel that shows the old black and whites now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we have to hope that there won't be some business deal that precludes people from watching it. I know uh, uh, that uh, Mario Scorsese and Steven Spielberg are, are very much actively making sure the company that owns it doesn't let that happen. Yes, I, I'll tell you when I was when I was a kid. Um, just before uh, TMZ started, TMC started. Uh, we, you know, Cinemax showed black and white movies, and a lot of people forget that. And then after they stopped, then uh, AMC came, and AMC only showed black and white movies for about six years. And then next thing you know, they're showing more uh, colorized movies of the '70s and '80s. And it's like, oh my God, what happened to this channel? You know? Yeah, I know. Did you know the Z Channel? The Z Channel. Oh, oh um, I heard of the Z Channel. It was gone by the time I, I can remember. And I think it was only in L.A. It was only in L.A., but we all, um, all over, like in New York, we would see. I was lucky enough to have my first feature play on the Z Channel. That was an extraordinary honor. And there's a fabulous documentary by John Cassavetti's daughter called the Z Channel. Uh-huh. That's a bit of this incredible footage of some of the films they've shown. Yeah, I've, I've I've heard a few people talk about the Z Channel, and yeah, that that's that sounds extraordinary. I also uh, realized um, you yeah, you just had a birthday. Did you do anything special for it? Thank you. Well, I did a lot of running around. I think birthdays should last at least a, a week. Yeah. Maybe a whole month if you can. Oh, I do a whole month for my birthday. <laughs> oh, great. There you go. But but it's actually on the day, um, I spent the afternoon at the Metropolitan Museum of Art mm-hmm. looking at some extraordinary exhibits, including an, um, an extraordinary um, fashion exhibit featuring the work, I mean, just monumental, of Karl Lagerfeld, particularly when he took over Coco Chanel Mm -hmm. now. And as your audience may know, there have been some wonderful movies made about Coco Chanel. Um, uh, So she was very much in in my mind and in the forefront of a successful woman in that area. And then the evening, because you know lots of people that have your exact birthday. I mean, I'm not not talking about year, but the day. Uh, Well... I, I mean, I, I know who sh- uh, what celebrities share my birthday, but that's about it. <laughs> well, uh, I never knew anyone who had my birthday um, other than Harrison Ford, whom I did know when I lived out in L.A. So I was excited to spend part of my birthday watching Indiana Jones. Nice. And with Destiny. And um, he was just so wonderful and charismatic. Yeah, I had thought about you know going to see it, but I I don't know. I mean, is it? I mean, is it that great? I mean, even though Spielberg didn't direct it. Yeah, I think it's great, and it's it's worth just seeing for the excellence in their ability to transform him technologically, and it works. Whereas they've tried it in other films with. People like Pacino and De Niro, I think, in the Scorsese movie, and it didn't quite work. Um, but he's in such great shape at 81 that his body doesn't look out of place with the making him younger. 
mm-hmm. know? So yeah. that's a, the muscle tone of his face and works with the de-aging process. So... I, I think that's why I think that's why people are up in arms now about about AI and just the way you know the people have been able to transform things you know because when you watch old movies with old character actors you can tell that they're old now you know but now with the whole CGI thing I don't know I just think it cheapens it you know mm-hmm. well he's not old this works in the story because it's in the essence a flashback to the character. He's not young throughout. I see. He's young, and then he's sort of middle-aged, and then he's his current age for a significant part of it. So I, I think it worked, and it was it was fun to see, um, and it was a fun way to wind out, or wind up the series. You know, have to, mm-hmm. imagine if we could do our James Bond winding up with uh, who was the first Sean Connery. Right. right. Wouldn't it be wonderful? You know? Oh, yeah. And, and so um, I, that was part of the um, loveliness of the day. And, and sitting now, you must have that in L.A. too, but in New York, there are a bunch of viewers who have these incredible reserve seat reclining um, uh, seats uh, with incredible new screens and and great popcorn, and, and so I felt like a kid again. Yeah, oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll give it a shot, or I'll just wait until it comes on Blu-ray or on demand. You know, James Mangold, who directed it, he's a, he's a pretty good filmmaker. I think so, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, t- today would have been my Nana's birthday. Uh, her birthday was July 20th, 1920. Uh, 2020. Uh, yeah, she died. If I'm not wrong, because she was my first first person to hire me as a screenwriter was Natalie Wood. And yes, she was July 20th, 1938. She is July 28th? No, no, July 20th, 1938. Oh, I see different years, yeah, because I remember her birthday being a week after mine. Uh, I learned that when I was working with her. What a what a talent! She would have been someone wonderful to see how she would have aged in films and uh, what she would have done. Yeah, oh, yeah. and she and she survived a lot of tragedy in her life too. I used to have a couple of books uh, written about her, and yeah, and I, I talked to somebody who wrote a book about about the night that um, her drowning happened. Too, it's just it's so tragic, really tragic. Very, very. We, we've had these. Uh, you know, such incredible people and all that. I'm like, you know, and what happened to Lady Diana? And for me, my heart's been breaking the last number of months because I worked with uh, Julian Sands. Oh yeah. And adored him, and uh, he was such an adventure. He always went off um, after making a film on mm-hmm. some adventure, and so to, to go missing like that was just. Same, the same way Charles Levin passed, the character actor, he went missing for a week, and then his son found him in the woods. Oh, um, yeah. It was awful. Very, very hard. Very hard. Yeah. Well, we should we should think less about passing and more about the wonderful uh, careers that these people uh, gave us. And yes. How- I totally agree. I, yeah, it's it's so, it's so funny. You know, he was so good. Julian Sands was so good at playing these kind of smarmy characters, but I just heard across the board he was the nicest guy. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful, and so handsome in his youth and middle age, and um, yeah, yes, and smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so aside from this um, this um, movie that uh, you hope to make once the strike is resolved and everything, is there anything else you have coming up? Well, I like what you said about different genres, and um, yeah, you know, I have a couple of dream projects that I, I really want to do, but I, I I'd rather uh, you know save them, see if I can get closer. Uh, I think the sort of my obligation as a filmmaker to my audiences and uh, to my teams of people that I work with and we so enjoy working together over and over again is to find ways to do movie either, movies either 
small budget or big budget. And just the big budget, when I was younger, you know, I would go and take years to do a bigger budget that may or may not have happened right. at the expense of smaller pictures. So I'm not doing that anymore. I'm trying very hard to uh, kind of be disciplined and if the material is good, that, that's always the deciding factor, if the material is good. But if it is, I want to be making a picture a year. You know. Have you ever thought about writing a memoir or a, a book about film? Oh, yes. And people have asked me. And, um, you know, I, I, I could see that. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, even have some ideas of titles. But um, I, I, I want to wait until it's harder for me to, to make movies. And that would be a wonderful, delicious thing to fall back on. Um, and uh, right now, it takes so much effort and concentration, as you know, to make any film. I just don't have time to uh, uh, to do that. Right. Um, you know, as I'm saying it to you, I think like I'm an idiot. I actually have someone working for me, Clara, not you, but uh, you know, Matt. I could just be like talking into his computer, right? <laughs> and. and that down, she's nodding. So I haven't done that, but boy, you'll have a lot of fun. I don't. I I will have very short chapters, and they'll all be about the most interesting people that I've met and in, in the film business, which is, you know, hundreds, hundreds of very exciting people. Oh, that's wonderful. I've been working on my memoir on and off the last few years. I need to get back to it, though, because I took a, a break from it. And there's a lot of great stories I want to tell. Many stories I've already told on the podcast over the years, but have a lot of good ones that I haven't yet. Well, it's also wonderful to assemble it, uh, you know, because even if uh, it was on the podcast, to just have it all together in one place. That's yeah. fabulous. The, the mind plays tricks on you, too, because then you start forgetting stuff. I have to write everything down now because I forget stuff like crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. But can you go back to source material and, you know, to, to remind you? Of course, because, again, I write everything down. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Linda, thank you once again for coming on, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer and that when the strike is over, the next movie is again awesome. I'll see Chantilly Bridge at some point, and I'll let you know what I think. And I hope uh, you just be safe out there. Thanks. Same to you. Most important for all of us, and, and thank your audience, too, for their uh, you know, enthusiasm, always. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Linda Yellen, ain't she a sweetheart? She is such a great lady. I just adore her. Go check out Chantilly Bridge, wherever is available. I'm going to definitely watch it, you know. I think even though she would have preferred I watched it first, I think at the end of the day, she knows how much I adore her and I adore the original. And she loves my enthusiasm. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.